Fatter, a little grayer, as it looks like here, huh? But uh, a lot of stress over the last year and a half. But I'm coming to you, and I am uh, filming this because I have had the opportunity to come up to the northernmost town in America, and it is called Barrow, Alaska, also known as Utkiagvik, Alaska. And um, I'm bringing you guys with me here, so. Uh, tomorrow I'm actually going to be going to Point Lay, which is another little village in Alaska, and I'll uh, try to include some footage there if they let me. So, let's go take a look. As you can see, there's not a whole lot to the, the town. All of the houses, if you notice, all of the houses sit on stilts or pilings, you know, and this is because they... Uh, this is permafrost up here, and I'll explain that in a later video. So I'm in the local store here. It's called something like Stuak Pak or Stuak Pak, but um, I'm trying not to bring too much attention to my shelf because I'm not used to doing this, but uh, I thought I'd bring you around, show you some of the prices here, and uh, just take a look. Then you have small things like uh, mops and such that are $12.99 or $12.89, you know, Scr scotch Bright scrubber, $4.89. So it's not terrible in those items. So I'm back in, uh, in the truck here, and I wasn't able to film a whole lot inside of the store because there's a lot of people in there and everybody's kind of looking at me, and uh, I just was a little bit uncomfortable. So... It is what it is. Um, I'm gonna take you up into the room here where we're staying and I'm gonna show you the hotel here in just a second, but I'm gonna take you up into the room and then show you what I purchased, how much it cost, and you know the amount of items for the price I paid and I'll, I'll tell you what each item costs. So check it out. As you can see, I am in the hotel now and we're gonna get you a look here. I went and picked up Mexican food from the furthest north Mexican food establishment called Cruises in Barrow, Alaska. And uh, we're going to see what it tastes like. But just to give you an idea of what I got, check this out. All right, so nothing fancy. Mexican Coke, because you have to. And a little bit of rice, a little bit of beans, and three tacos with red onions, not, uh, or purple onions, whatever you call these. Not exactly what I would expect, but it's okay. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, old cilantro. But anyway, so rice over here, rice, beans, tres taquitos. How much with a cook? 34 bucks. Gadzooks. But you know what? It's all right. That's what you get when you're here and Mexico or uh, I'm not in Mexico I am uh, I'm having a bit of a taste of Mexico in the the village of Barrow or Uktiagvik as they're calling it now and it's hard to see out here beyond those those buildings that's actually the Arctic Ocean and it's all frozen over 
and you really can't see it on the camera, but um, the way that the ice crushes up against itself, it's almost like, um, it looks almost like a glacier. It just kind of crushes and then freezes and, and crushes up again. And so you've got these huge chunks of ice that kind of just stick out that are all frozen together. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to get out there to you because it's kind of a nasty day. But uh, we're going to try. So hopefully, cross fingers crossed, we'll get to do that. But right now I'm going to eat. And then after I eat, I'm going to show you guys what I got at the store and how that came out. What was a split second for you guys was about 20 minutes for me. Um, man, my eyes, I don't know what's going on. I'm tired, I guess. But uh, finished those tacos, finished the beans and the rice, and they were actually really good. Uh, you know, those who know me, which are not very many people on here, but those who know me know that I absolutely love Mexican food. I grew up on it, uh, lived in Mexico. Um, my wife and I speak Spanish every day at home. My wife is from Mexico, and uh, we eat a lot of Mexican food. And those tacos were filling. They were good. The salsa, not what I was expecting, but also really good. I still got a burn in my mouth, which is nice. I, I like hot salsa. And uh, anyway, so it's good. I think, man, it's snowing and it's dreary and it's really super gray and you can't see anything outside. I'd love to take you guys outside, but there's just nothing to see. So, I don't know, hopefully in the morning we'll get to see something before I fly out again. And... Uh, and then there's always a chance on Thursday when I come back to Barrow. But I don't know if I have a truck that day. So let's see what happens. All right, peeps. This is the haul from the grocery store. We got a bag of Lay's potato chips, which I'll tell you right now, um, these were on sale. And they were actually on sale for a fairly great price up here because a bag of these chips... Well, I'll talk to you about it in a second. Got a 12 pack of Pepsi. Got a dozen eggs to cook out in the, the bush tomorrow when we're out there. Two cans of soup for either lunch or dinner, probably dinner tomorrow. Two um, things of Serrano's to eat. I got two Aquafinas. Two sandwiches, two roast beef sandwiches for lunch tomorrow. The eggs are for breakfast on Thursday and ibuprofen in case a brother gets a headache so all of this was 81.53 right there so let's take a look at how much all this cost the Serranos were 4.69 each Progresso soup 8.09 Progresso soup 7.89 the roast beef sandwiches were $9 and $8 respectively. Aquafina drinking water, $5.79 each. Large eggs, $3.99. The Lay's barbecue chips, $5.99. And the ibuprofen was $5.49. So I said the Lay's chips were actually a really good price. And the reason is because most chips over there are $10 or $10.79 a piece. And so, a certain few bags of chips, the Lay's, original Lay's barbecue, those were all uh, $5.99 today. So I went ahead and picked up a bag. I don't usually buy chips, but because I'm going out to a village tomorrow that doesn't have any, um, any stores, any restaurants. I mean, there's a, probably a little tiny store there, but uh, definitely not enough to to eat I, apparently they told me to bring food once I got to Barrow so um so we are going to uh take those and eat those on those days and you know it just kind of is what it is right but it's fine I don't mind we'll uh we're gonna have a good time and um anyway so here let me show you my room so as you can see there's the bed I was just on so it looks like I've got two full beds in this room it's a tiny little room but it's uh it's got some nice little artwork over the the beds here. This one's a great little pick. Check this out. These two sitting happy on top of a porch. That's fantastic. But uh anyhow, so 
The rest of the room, there's obviously the entrance door and a closet to the left. I got a little desk here where I sat and ate, and that's where I'm going to study tonight. A dresser, television, which I'm really not going to use. And over here, we've got the restroom, which, you know, it's a standard restroom. Don't need to show you everything, especially not uh, myself in the mirror. So, anyhow, uh, we'll we'll catch you again. Hey, well, we are now in Point Lay, Alaska. So Point Lay is up on the western coast of the uh, of the Arctic Ocean, as Alaska. You know, if we're drawing towards you, here's the tip where Barrow is. Alaska comes around, then you've got the the peninsula out here, and then lower, obviously, is your Aleutian Islands. And so, if Barrow is up here at the very tip, we're over right about here. And this is um, this a little town. This town has about 227 people here. I had the privilege of coming out here for work for my day job. And in this area, as I said, we are on the Arctic Ocean. We've got some kids coming by here that you're going to see. Must be out just playing around. But uh, we are on the Arctic Ocean. And, and here in a little bit, I'm going to take you over to see all that. But as, as uh, I think I'm going to take a walk around the streets as well. So come with me on that and we will see what we can see. Well, as you can see, I made it into a truck. I was uh, on my way out to go walking and ran into a local gal. Had a bit of a chat with her, but gosh, it's cold out here. I can't, I don't see. Oh, yeah, it's nine below. So negative nine for some of you and we we're out there talking for probably 10 minutes and my ears and my nose hurt and so I just jumped back in the truck and we're gonna take a, a ride and go see what we could see here so buckle your seat belts I can't see very well um, on my screen so I'm hoping that you can see what I see but off in the distance there is the old point lay and that's where they started the development and then this icy piece in between us and them is, I, I'm not sure if it's a really large lake or if it's just a portion of, of the bay because I don't see any broken up ice. But further off in the distance, this direction, you know, there's the Arctic Ocean out there. And now, you know, this side is where Point Lay is uh, currently sitting. And you see that green house on the end right there that greenhouse I was just I'm staying in a place that's just across the street from it so the lady I was speaking with told me how behind that greenhouse which as I started to say earlier that I think I cut off was that basically I'm staying in a place that's just across the street and one house up from there and there was a polar bear last week behind that house that was coming and starting to stalk the dogs and so they had to kill it in order to uh, keep the people here safe because this is polar bear region. And I was hoping to see a polar bear, but I don't think I'm going to get to. Though it would be very cool. So let's continue around the town. I'm not sure how visible it is, but off in the distance beyond those houses, you see the crunched up, what looks kind of like um, mountains or hills. Again, that's just the snow, I'm sorry, the ice of the Arctic Sea getting crushed up as waves still come in, even though there's ice and it lifts up the, the ice, sets it down. Then the next set will come in, lift ice up, and set it on top of the, uh, the, the chunk in front of it, and it just builds up these big ice chunks. That is actually land, and so 
This place is actually flatter than Kansas. I know that's hard to believe, and for you Kansans out there, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but uh, you don't even get that as a prize, because you're not the flattest. Alaska one, Kansas zero. Speaking of which, Alaska is literally more than twice the size of Texas. Which is why they say that if you were to cut Alaska in half, Texas would be the third largest state. Oh, Alaska one, Texas nothing. So this object in the middle of the road is actually heating the it's diesel run and it is heating the waterways and the sewer below the town because we are in permafrost. You might have noticed that all of these houses have stilts around them or under them and the reason is because with this being permafrost the ground has to remain frozen constantly. If it is not frozen then it becomes mud that will just suck these houses into it. And so in order to provide ventilation underneath it to keep the ground cold, to keep the building from heating it up, we have to raise the buildings up off of the ground by about five feet. And so you're gonna see that with all these buildings, with the exception of some of these big shop buildings which have siphon systems and, and various ways that chill the ground underneath the slabs. I'll show you one here in just a second. Here's the site of an old shop that just has been wind beaten and destroyed. Apparently in this town there are a lot of uh, condemned buildings and this is how people unfortunately live here. So I'm not sure what this shop building is, but this shop building clearly is a slab on grade type of a facility. It's a metal building, as is the one across the street. And it very much has to have some kind of a system that keeps, in fact, I think you can see on the edge of this building here, just next to the garage door right over here, there are these pipes. And I believe those pipes go underneath the building and they suck the heat out and deposit the heat out above at the, uh, the tops of those pipes in order to keep that ground frozen. Because if they do not keep it frozen, the building will sink and be you know, sucked down into the mud. And over here, it looks like we're going to get a better view of something. I don't know if, well, it's snow. We got a better view of snow, guys. The sun looks nice. Beautiful. A little bit of a bumpy road, my apologies. So here is the school in town, the biggest and the nicest building in town, it is, I believe this is K-12, through and I don't know how many uh, residents, I'm sorry, how many students are actually attending this school, but as you can see it is a pretty nice building. So Point Lay and all of the North Slope up here they get about nine months of snow. I was talking with a gal in Barrow today and she said that it'll be melted about by about June and then it starts flying again in September. So they have three months of summer or three months of, of um, let's say one month of spring, one month of summer, one month of fall and then it's back to winter for them. And as you can see here, look at this. This is an unkempt 
building, and apparently people still live in there because it's free rent, even though it's condemned and nobody's supposed to be living there. But they don't have to pay rent, and there's really no one out here to enforce them from uh, and keep them out, so it just kind of is what it is. So here's a site. These are all caribou antlers up there on top of that Connex. And a lot of caribou run through here. I actually got to see a caribou the uh, other day from the plane as we were pulling into Barrow. But I've not seen any wildlife in person since arriving to the North Slope. This is the back side of the building I'm staying in. And you can see those Connexes that we... Well, that concludes our drive around Point Lay, which uh, it's kind of a cool little town. I don't think that I could live in a place this small, but I don't know if we see you guys were able to see it, but there are a lot of kids outside playing, even though that it, it's you know, nine below zero here. And, you know, it's a place without a lot of crime. You know, that's the benefit of living in a small place like this is kids can just walk around and do whatever. The biggest threat here is wildlife more than people, which is pretty much not the case most places you go. So we will see what else we can see. Let's take a look.